What is the formal charge of chlorine in the molecules Cl2, BeCl2, and ClF5? So formal charge of chlorine in molecules Cl2, BeCl2, and ClF5. So the key part here is that they're asking for formal charge and not like their oxidation number or things like that. To find formal charge, you first have to be able to draw out its Lewis structure, uh, its Lewis dot structure, just because you want to be able to see how these things are bonded to each other in order to actually assign that formal charge, okay? You want to see uh, the distribution of electrons between each one. So with that being said, um, to draw the Lewis structure, we're actually going to make sure that we get the right amount of electrons for chlorine. So chlorine is on the 17th column, okay? And for those that are in the 17th column, typically have seven electrons to work with. You can also show this um, of its just as valence shell by the electron configuration. So for chlorine, if I want to do the shorthand notation, which is like the noble gas notation, I would start at the element, the noble gas that comes prior to it, okay? So that would be neon, right? And then when I go through the periodic table, I will start with my S subshell. So that's sodium and magnesium. That would make up 3S2. And then I jump all the way to the columns 13 through 17 to where chlorine is. And that would be 3P1, 2, 3 for phosphorus, 4 for sulfur, and 5 for chlorine. So 3P5, okay? And you'll notice that we have 2 and 5 in our most outer because everything that comes up to neon would be in your first and second shell. So this would be the third shell, the most valent shell. And you notice that here it also shows that in total it has seven electrons it's working with. So this Cl2 here will be working with 14 electrons total. Um, BeCl2, so that would be beryllium. As you can see, beryllium is actually the second element on the second row. So if we were to start with that noble gas rotation as well, beryllium, okay, would start with helium, and then it'd just be 2s2. That's all there is. And then you can see here, beryllium only has two electrons it's working with. So we have Cl2, which is um, 14 plus two, in total, we're working with 16 here, 16 electrons for the BeCl2, and then ClF5, fluorine, okay, if we did the normal gas rotation as well, it's actually still in the same uh, row as beryllium, it just extends further, so it would encompass that 2s2 for the lithium and beryllium, and now we're in the P subshell, similar to the chlorine, but it's right above it. So it'd be 2P1, 2, 3 for nitrogen, 4 for oxygen, and 5 for fluorine. So it'd be 2P5. All right. So with that being said, you can see here that fluorine actually does also work with 7. So in total, we have 7 times 5 plus 7, which is also 7 times 6. So we're working with 42 electrons here. Okay, so let's start with Cl2. We're working with 14 electrons. So I have chlorine. I'm just going to start with just one single bond between chlorine. Single bond means that each chlorine right now is sharing one of its seven electrons. So let's fill up the rest of the shell with the corresponding electrons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and you notice right away actually this satisfies this octet rule. And if you count it, you see actually we have 14 electrons because we have two, four, six right here on one side of the chlorine, then eight would be in the middle, then 10, 12, 14. So this is perfect. Now let's find the formal charge. 
the equation for the formal charge is the amount of electrons it can work with, which would be seven for fluorine specifically. That's what we're that's what they're asking for. And this can be applied to any of them actually, like the beryllium and the fluorine. But in this case, they're asking for the fluorine involved in these um, uh, molecules. So there's seven, and then we're going to subtract how many electrons it actually has, both the ones that it has by itself and the one that it's sharing. So the one that it has by itself here for either chlorine is gonna be six, okay? And the one that it's sharing is going to be two. But because it's sharing, you have to divide by two. So it'll be six plus two divided by two. So when you have seven minus this, you're in a sense doing seven minus seven because two divided by two would be one, so six plus one is seven. So the formal charge here would be zero. So the chlorine in these, like the diatomic uh, molecule or two chlorines, that has a formal charge on each chlorine of zero. Now for BeCl2, let's draw it out. So we're gonna have beryllium in the middle because it's the only unique one. And also it has relatively the most space to actually form bonds since it's working with two electrons. So the same thing here, we put the chlorines on the side, okay? Right now, each chlorine is still sharing one of its seven. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same here on this side, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And beryllium, in this case, is already using up two of its two electrons it can actually share. So beryllium is already done. So if we added all this to make sure that we do have 16, it would be eight on one chlorine, eight on the other chlorine, and that is what we'd have. So not to find the um, theoretical uh, charge, sorry, just trying to find a word. There we go. Formal charge of um, chlorine. In this case, we still start with seven. And you notice that it's really almost the same thing as above because it has to, each chlorine has to share two of its electrons, but this time it's not with each other, but with beryllium. So it'll be six plus two over two. And the formal charge of this will also be zero. Okay. And now ClF5. So for this one, this one's a little bit trickier. Uh, well, I guess it's just more extensive. So we have the chlorine in the middle because that's the um, unique one in this case. And it's surrounded by five fluorines. And you're probably wondering, how is chlorine going to do that? And the simple answer is that chlorine can do that just because it can, which is really annoying sometimes. But there are certain things called like the octet rule but at the same time, the octet rule kind of gets thrown out the window when you're dealing with <clears throat> when you're dealing with molecules such as these. It just decides that, you know what, I think I'm just gonna do whatever I want anyways, and it's your job to memorize what I look like. So, with that being said, what's gonna happen here is that we have ClF5, so it's going to be that the fluorines are each going to be attached to the central chlorine and it's gonna be sticking out like that as well, because that's the fifth one. And then we have to make sure we add every valence electron. So fluorine right now, each fluorine is sharing one of its seven with chlorine. So it's gonna be two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing here, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, same thing here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing here, two, three, four, five, oops, yeah, oopsie. Five, six, seven. And I only put this one in red just because we can see that it's the one that's really breaking the octet rule. Okay, six, seven, all right. So I hope you can kind of uh, visualize that. Maybe I should have drawn it a little bit bigger. But now chlorine, as you may have noticed, is only sharing so far five of the seven electrons it can actually work with. 
So not only does it have that extra fluorine breaking the octet rule, but chlorine actually also has a lone pair. So yes, chlorine is quite an extensive uh, molecule, I mean not molecule, uh, atom in this case that's working overtime in this molecule. But let's actually now see what the um, formal charge for this would be. So same thing, we start with seven. All right, and we're looking specifically at chlorine. So chlorine right now, okay, only has two electrons to itself, that lone pair down there, okay? And it's sharing two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. So coincidentally, actually, we still just get two plus five, and it actually works, because seven minus seven is still zero. So all these chlorines had a formal charge of zero. And if you're skeptical in terms of the amount of electrons we had, and if it was actually correct, we have eight on each fluorine, three, four, five, so that's 40, considering the fluorine and the chlorine are sharing two of those eight. But that's 40 in total, plus the two extra electrons chlorine has as a lone pair, that's 42. So we actually did get all the electrons on this Lewis dot diagram. So with all that being said, the formal charge as we've shown for all these for chlorine is actually all going to be zero. And exactly, talk about the equation. So seven, yep, six, um, two over two, two over two again, and then this one as we discussed, it was seven minus two plus 10 over two. So yes. Um, these are um, some of the questions you can get. It kind of appears as almost a trick question because why am I getting the same answer over and over again? But actually, the reason being is because, especially with, when it comes to formal charge, the goal of the atom presented in the molecule is to orient itself in a way to where its formal charge it can be as close to zero as possible because that is when it's most stable. Okay, so getting the formal charges of zero is something that you should actually be hoping to express, ex expect, especially when your actual molecule itself has no charge of its own. If you're not working with an ion, then you most likely should not have like a formal charge of like one or two or negative one in there. Um, you could, but then that means you should be looking for, if you have like a negative one, for example, one of the formal charges there has to be a positive one for you to still have a neutral, um, a non-ionic uh, molecule to where it has a charge because you want them to cancel out. So that's one of the question five. <laughs>